The 9,586 9, meeting of the Security Council is called to order. At the outset of the meeting, I should like at the request of the delegation of the Russian Federation and on behalf of the members of the Security Council to ask that all those present now stand and join in observing a minute of silence to pre present its condolences and sympathy to the government and people of Russia and in the memory of victims of the heinous and cowardly terrorist, terrorist attack at the concert hall in Moscow region, the Russian Federation on 22nd of March. I now invite you to stand and observe a minute of silence. I thank you. The provisional agenda for this meeting is the situation in the Middle East, including the Palestinian question. The agenda is adopted. In accordance with Rule 37 of the Council's provisional rules of procedure. I invite the representatives of Israel and Yemen to participate in this meeting. It is so decided.
I propose that the Council invite the permanent observer of the Observer State of Palestine to the United Nations to participate in the meeting in accordance with the provisional rules of procedure and previous practice in this regard. There be no objection. It is so decided. The Security Council will now begin its consideration of item two of the agenda. Members of the Council have before them document S-2024-254, the text of the draft resolution submitted by Algeria, Ecuador, Guyana, Japan, Malta, Mozambique, Republic of Korea, Sierra Leone, Slovenia, and Switzerland. The Council is ready to proceed proceed to the uh, the council is ready to proceed to the vote on the draft resolution before it yes. i now give the floor to those members of the council who wish to make statements before the vote i give the floor to the representative of mozambique mr president i have the honor to introduce this draft resolution on behalf of the 10 elected members of the Security Council, namely Algeria, Ecuador, Guyana, Japan, Malta, Republic of Korea, Sierra Leone, Slovenia, Switzerland, and my own country, Mozambique. We wish to commend the presidency of Japan for convening this meeting in order to take action on this important resolution on the Middle East, including the Palestinian question. We express our deep appreciation to all members of this council for their efforts and the inputs on this draft resolution aimed at ending the catastrophic situation in the Gaza Strip. Mr. President, the situation in Gaza is a matter of grave concern to the entire international community. Indeed, the escalation of the conflict in the Gaza Strip and its catastrophic consequences are a clear threat to international peace and security. In this context, the E10 felt compelled to table this draft resolution before you. The 15 members of this council, individually and collectively, have a mandate under the Charter to work for the maintenance of international peace and security, and their actions impact the entire international community. This is the strong conviction that led to the drafting of the text that we are considering this morning. This council has been consistently unanimous in its agreement on the obligation of the parties in conflict to respect international law, including international humanitarian law and international human rights law. The 10 have always supported the call for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza as a fundamental step. For this reason, and in respect for the holy month of Ramadan, we have proposed the present resolution that it demands an immediate ceasefire during this second period, leading to a permanent and sustainable uh, ceasefire. At the same time, the draft resolution demands the immediate and the unconditional release of all hostages and emphasizes that humanitarian access 
must be allowed to address their medical and other humanitarian needs. These have been among our key demands for weeks. The draft resolution further demands that the parties comply with their obligations under international law, as we said before, including international humanitarian law and human rights law. The draft resolution also emphasizes the need for the parties to abide by the pertinent resolutions adopted by this council, including resolutions 2712 and 2720 of 2023. The 10 have a consultative, have adopted a consultative approach during the negotiation process of this text. We have consulted extensively and in good faith with all members of this council in a frank, open, and flexible manner with the aim of achieving a text that addresses the situation in Gaza. The adoption of this draft resolution will certainly be another important step uh, this council can build upon to comprehensively address the crisis in Gaza. Given the utmost urgency of the situation, we call upon all members of this council, all and each member of this council, to vote in favor of this resolution. While this resolution is crucial, it is essential that we continue working towards a comprehensive ceasefire and a lasting peace in the region. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Mozambique for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of Russian Federation. Mr. President, we are uh, extremely um, stunned and disappointed about the way the work on the draft resolution in the last 24 hours was done. The fact that the word permanent in OP1 relating to a ceasefire is supposed to be replaced by a more weak wording something we learned about a little more than an hour before the beginning of the meeting. That is unacceptable. We all received instructions for the vote on the text that contained the word permanent, and we believe that that is of fundamental importance. All of the remaining wording leaves too broad an area for interpretation, which could allow Israel to resume its military operation in the Gaza Strip at any moment following the expiry of the ceasefire, which we today hope will be established. In order to avoid this scenario, we would like to make an oral amendment to the text and return the word permanent in OP1. In so doing, it would read as it read in the previously issued resolution, namely, demands in immediate ceasefire for the months of Ramadan respected by all parties, leading to a permanent sustainable ceasefire, and also demands the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages, as well as ensuring humanitarian access to, uh, to address their medical and other humanitarian needs, and further demands that the parties comply with their obligations under international law in relation to all, uh, to all persons they detain. Thank you. I thank the representative of Russian Federation for their statement. Members of the Council have before them a proposed amendment submitted by Russian Federation to the text of the draft resolution contained in the document S-2024-254 submitted by Algeria, 
エクアドルガイアナジャパンマルタモザンビークリパブリックオブコリアシェアレオンスロベニアアンスイッツアランドルール36 of the Council's Provisional Rules of Procedure states inter alia the following when an amendment adds to or deletes from the text of a motion or draft resolution that amendment shall be voted on first accordingly I intend to put the proposal, proposed amendment to the vote first. Will those in favor of proposed amendment please raise their, raise their hand? Against? Abstentions? The result of the voting is as follows. Three votes in favor, one vote against, 11 abstentions. The proposed amendment has not been adopted, having failed to obtain the required number of votes. I shall put the draft resolution to the vote now. Will those in favor of the draft resolution contained in document S 2024 254 please raise their hand? Those against? Abstention. The result of the voting is as follows 14 votes in favor, zero vote against, one abstention. The draft resolution has been adopted as Resolution 2728 2024. I now give the floor to those members of the Council who wish to make statements after the vote. I give the floor to the representative of Algeria. Thank you, Mr. President. I would, do an... I would like to thank. All the council members for their flexibility and the constructive way that allowed us today to adopt this long awaited resolution. A resolution that calls for an immediate ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. in order to put an end to the massacres that unfortunately are still ongoing over the past five years, five months. Over the past five months, the Palestinian people has suffered greatly. This bloodbath has continued for far too long. And it is our obligation to put an end to this bloodbath before it is too late. Finally, Finally, the Security Council is shouldering its responsibility.
باعتباره المسؤول الأول as the primary organ responsible for maintaining international peace and security. It is finally responding to the calls of the international community. These repeated calls not only from the international community, but also from the Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres. And once again, we renew our support to the Secretary General for his noble position and for his support to this just cause. Despite the heinous campaigns that were launched against him. Mr. President, when we voted the draft resolution tabled by Algeria last month, we promised that we will spare no effort. We will continue to work hard to make sure that the Security Council is abiding by its full responsibility. We also promised that we will come back once again to knock on the doors of the Security Council. And here we are today alongside all ten elected member states to convey a clear message to the Palestinian people. This message is as follows. The international community in its entirety did not abandon you feels your suffering it did not abandon you Mr. President adopting today's resolution is only the beginning to meet the aspirations of the Palestinian people. And we look forward to the commitment and the compliance of the Israeli occupying power with this resolution for them to put an end to the bloodbath without any conditions to end the suffering of the Palestinian people. It is the responsibility of the Security Council to ensure the implementation of the provisions of this resolution. In conclusion, Mr. President, I reaffirm that Algeria will return once again before the Security Council under the instructions of His Excellency the President of the Republic to make sure that Palestine returns to its natural status as a full-fledged member, a sovereign member states of the United Nations. I thank you. I thank the representative of Algeria for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of the United States. Thank you, Mr. President. At the top, I want to express my deepest condolences to the families and loved ones of last week's terrorist attack in Moscow. We condemn terrorism in all its forms, 
and stand in solidarity with the Russian people in grieving the loss of life from this horrific event. Colleagues, today this council spoke out in support of the ongoing diplomatic efforts led by the United States, Qatar, Egypt, to bring about an immediate and sustainable ceasefire, secure the immediate release of all hostages, and help alleviate the tremendous suffering of Palestinian civilians in Gaza who are in dire need of protection and life-saving humanitarian assistance. The United States fully supports these critical objectives. In fact, they were the foundation of the resolution we put forward last week, a resolution that Russia and China vetoed. But colleagues, the United States' support for these objectives is not simply rhetorical. We're working around the clock to make them real, on the ground, through diplomacy, because we know that it is through, only through diplomacy that we can push this agenda forward. We're getting closer to a deal for an immediate ceasefire with the release of all hostages, but we're not there yet. Now, let's be clear. A ceasefire could have come about months ago if Hamas had been willing to release hostages months ago. Instead, Hamas continues to stand in the way of peace, to throw up roadblocks, cower in tunnels beneath Gaza cities and behind uh, under civilian infrastructure and hide among the civilian population. So today my ask to members of this council and to member states in every region of the world is this. Speak out and demand unequivocally that Hamas accepts the deal on the table. Now, I hope I'm wrong, I really do, but I don't expect that from Russia and China, especially because they still can't bring themselves to condemn Hamas's terrorist attacks on October 7th. Just last week, Russia and China vetoed a resolution that condemned this horrific attack, a resolution the vast majority of this council supported. They have shown time and time again that they are not actually interested in advancing a durable peace through diplomatic efforts, nor for all their rhetoric are they interested in making any meaningful contributions to humanitarian efforts. Instead, they are using this devastating conflict as a political cudgel to try to divide this council at a time when we need to come together. It is deeply, deeply cynical, and we should all see through it. Colleagues, we appreciated the willingness of members of this council to take some of our edits and improve on this resolution. Still, certain key edits were ignored, including our request to add a condemnation of Hamas. And we did not agree with everything in the resolution. For that reason, we were unfortunately not able to vote yes. However, as I've said before, we fully support some of the critical objectives in this non-binding resolution. And we believe it was important for the council to speak out and make clear that our ceasefire must, any ceasefire must come with the release of all hostages. Indeed, as I've said before, the only path to a durable end to this conflict is the release of all hostages. Critically, a ceasefire and the release of hostages will allow much more humanitarian aid to get into Gaza at a time when famine is looming large and provide an opportunity to work toward a sustainable cessation of hostilities, toward a future where Hamas can no longer threaten Israel and never repeat October 7th and no longer control Gaza and use civilians as shields toward a future where Palestinians and Israelis live side by side in peace in two democratic states of their own. Something that will never happen with Hamas, a terrorist organization dedicated to the destruction of Israel and the killing of Jews, a terrorist organization this body still fails to condemn controlling, Hamas, uh, controlling Gaza. Colleagues, we meet during the holy month of Ramadan. This should be a reason, a season of peace for Muslim communities around the world. Just as October 7th, Simhat Torah, should have been a day of peace for Jewish communities. This resolution rightly acknowledges 
that during the month of Ramadan, we must recommit to peace. Hamas can do that by accepting the deal on the table. A ceasefire can begin immediately with the release of the first hostage. And so we must put pressure on Hamas to do just that. This is the only path to securing a ceasefire and the release of hostages, as we have all called for today. That is what this resolution means. A ceasefire of any duration must come with the release of hostages. This is the only path. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the United States for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of Slovenia. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Today is an important day. Most of all, we hope it will signal an important day for the people of the Middle East, a day that will help silence the guns, stop the killing, free the hostages, as well as bring some calm to and clear over the sky, uh, the clear the sky over Gaza. The day that marks the beginning of the end of pain and suffering of civilians. This is a significant day for the elected members. We found our voice of a unifying force inside the Council. This is the reason why we are on the Council. We showed the leadership for peace. And it is a good day for the whole Council as we aligned our efforts and decision with the calls coming from the UN General Assembly and the UN Secretary General, from the humanitarian organizations, and from the world public. We demonstrated that we can find unity for peace, a small step in rebuilding trust in the Council. Today's resolution is just the beginning. We will need more of this unity for Gaza, as well as for many other conflicts, and Slovenia is ready. Mr. President, I don't need, but I wish to thank my colleagues, the elected members, as we went through the process together. This is Slovenia's third month on the Council, and we are looking forward to many more joint ventures together in search of peace. I wanted to thank the permanent members for giving us a chance for having trust in the power of the EU10 and for being patient during negotiations. Mr. President, we delivered the strongest signal thus far. We demand an immediate ceasefire for the month of Ramadan, leading to lasting, sustainable ceasefire. It is a call we have all been desperate to hear from the Council. A short and focused resolution is a firm sign from the Council that this conflict must stop. It offers an opportunity for peace for Palestinians and an opportunity for diplomatic efforts, including those of Egypt, Qatar, and the US to continue. We express our appreciation for the commitment of the Secretary General, UN staff members on the ground, humanitarian coordinators, as well as for the leadership of different UN agencies, humanitarian and health organizations, including UNRWA. We recall the binding nature of the Security Council resolutions and call for swift implementation of this clear resolution, in particular with regards to the ceasefire, the unconditional release of hostages, and the urgent need for expansion of the flow of humanitarian aid. We also reiterate our call for full respect of international law, including international humanitarian law and human rights law. Thank you. I thank the representative of Slovenia for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of the Republic of Korea. Thank you, Mr. President. Today's adoption of the resolution proposed by the E10, including the Republic of Korea, has a historic meaning in that it is the very first resolution by this council that demands a ceasefire in Gaza. After numerous attempts by the Council and consistent appeals by the UN Secretary General, Ocha, and so on, amid rising death tolls. It is also significant that this is the first ever resolution introduced by the E10 
and adopted on a Security Council regional agenda item. As one, as one of the E10, the Republic of Korea is pleased by today's adoption of the resolution and commends the dedicated efforts of all E10 colleagues, including Mozambique, E10 coordinator, Algeria, representing the views of the Arab world, and Japan, the presidency of the council, in the process of drafting and negotiating the resolution. In addition, we appreciate the cooperation of the P5, in particular the US, for its sincere and utmost coordination with the E10 in the spirit of compromise. In order for today's resolution to have concrete significance beyond the internal politics of the Security Council, it must have a tangible impact on the situation in the Gaza Strip by saving the lives of innocent civilians and easing the humanitarian crisis. The situation on the ground in Gaza must be different before and after this resolution. This will only be possible when both Israel and Hamas respect and faithfully implement this resolution. Even though it is not explicitly coercive under Chapter 7 of the Charter, the parties to the conflict must bear in mind that this resolution reflects the consensus of the international community, one forged through active discussion in the Security Council and General Assembly for more than five months. The most important thing is implementing the ceasefire starting right now. As defined in the resolution, violence and firing must be ceased immediately. Hostages taken by Hamas, Hamas and other groups must be returned to their families right away. Barriers to the provision of humanitarian assistance must be lifted. The entire international community must also actively cooperate to save civilian lives and overcome acute food insecurity through humanitarian aid at scale. Restore basic public order and improve Gaza's fundamental public services, including health and sanitation. And based on these achievements, preparations for redoubled political and diplomatic dialogue to resolve the Palestinian question in the long term must commence step by step. All parties will have to take a step back and respond to the global call to participate in the cause of restoring peace and humanity. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the Republic of Korea for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of Marta. Thank you, President. At the offset, I wish to express our condolences to the Russian Federation for the atrocious terrorist attack of last week. We condemn all terrorism in all its form. Malta was proud to co-pen this, co this resolution, which we have just adopted, which calls for a ceasefire for the month of Ramadan, leading to a lasting, sustainable ceasefire. With this resolution, the Security Council has clearly spoken out on the urgent and pressing need to stop the fighting. This is critical to alleviate the humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza. This resolution must now be immediately and unconditionally implemented by all parties. The fighting needs to stop without further delays. All hostages must be safely released. On this occasion, we also express our appreciation and support for the ongoing negotiations by Egypt, Qatar, and the United States. We sincerely hope that these diplomatic efforts can lead to tangible results in the coming days. Meanwhile, humanitarian access to the Gaza Strip is of critical importance to avert the risk of famine. There is the urgent need to expand the flow of humanitarian assistance and in demanding the lifting of all barriers preventing the necessary humanitarian assistance as requested by this resolution. In closing, President, a sustainable ceasefire must also be accompanied by a political urgency to build a durable foundation for peace. 
Malta reaffirms its commitment to a just and comprehensive resolution of the conflict based on a two-state solution along the pre-1967 borders, addressing the legitimate aspirations of both sides with Jerusalem as a future capital of two states, Israel and Palestine, living side by side in peace and security in line with the relevant Security Council resolutions and internationally agreed parameters. Thank you. I thank the representative of Malta for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of France. Monsieur le Président. Mr. President. La France, se France félicite de welcomes de la the adoption 27 of Resolution 2728. More than five months after the beginning of the crisis in Gaza caused by the Hamas, terrorist attack waged by Hamas, it was high time for the Security agir. Council to act. It was high time for it to establish a ceasefire. It was high time for it to demand the release of hostages. It was high time for it to demand the release of hostages. It was high time for it to call for comprehensive humanitarian access Alors and mass aid at a time when famine is rife in Gaza. The adoption of this resolution demonstrates that the Security Council can still act when all of its members make the necessary efforts to discharge Je their mandate. I wish in this connection to personally commend the permanent representative of the United States for the role played. The Security Council's silence on Gaza was becoming definite. It is high time now for the Council to finally contribute to finding a solution to this crisis. But this crisis is not over, alas, and our Council will have to remain mobilized and immediately get back to work. It will have to, following Ramadan, which finishes in two weeks, it will have to establish a permanent ceasefire. It will need to strive to see the recovery and stabilization enfin, of Gaza. Finally, and above all, the Security Council will have to get a political process back on track, a political process aiming to bring about the two-state solution, the only solution able to guarantee peace. Our Council, of course, cannot replace the parties, to, uh, the parties, but its role will be a pivotal one. France will shoulder its responsibilities and will propose in the coming days an initiative within the Security Council. Council. I thank you. I thank the representative of France for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of Switzerland. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. La Suisse a voté en faveur de ce projet de résolution et salue son adoption par le Conseil de sécurité. C'est enfin un signe d'espoir, car ce vote doit marquer un retour vers plus d'humanité dans le conflit au Proche-Orient. La dignité humaine et la décence doivent nous définir comme commune restaurer les infrastructures médicales, soulager le personnel médical et lui permettre d'accomplir à lui aussi sa mission sans danger. La résolution formule aussi une demande claire pour la libération immédiate et inconditionnelle des otages qui, eux aussi, ainsi que leurs familles, doivent pouvoir se retrouver enfin sains et saufs. Leur capture lors des actes terroristes du 7 octobre que la Suisse a fermement condamnée contrevient au droit international. Le résultat d'aujourd'hui est un appel clair lancé à toutes les parties de cesser les hostilités et de respecter pleinement enfin leurs obligations en vertu du droit international, notamment du droit international humanitaire et Pour une mise en œuvre efficace de la résolution que nous venons d'adopter, le cessez-le-feu immédiat devra sans, sans attendre mener à un cessez-le-feu durable. Et même, étant donné les conséquences humanitaires catastrophiques qui auraient une opération de large envergure à Rafa sur la population civile et les opérations humanitaires, une telle opération doit être évitée. Monsieur le Président, le secrétaire général hier au passage de Rafa a dit qu'il est temps de faire taire les armes. L'espoir, c'est d'être capable capable de voir la lumière malgré les ténèbres. Avec l'adoption de la résolution aujourd'hui, il est maintenant grand temps de reprendre espoir et de travailler ensemble, sans relâche, une perspective de paix durable, une solution à deux États où Israéliens et Palestiniens peuvent vivre côte à côte en paix, en sécurité et en dignité. Je vous remercie. Merci. Je remercie la représentative de la Suisse pour son statement. 
I give the floor to the representative of China. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President. China voted in favor of the draft resolution that has just been put to the vote. We thank Algeria, Mozambique, and other elected council members for their efforts. Last Friday, the Security Council voted on the other draft resolution proposed by the United States on the situation in Gaza. China, together with Algeria and Russia, voted against it. A comparison of the two drafts shows the differences. The current draft is unequivocal and correct in its direction, demanding an immediate ceasefire, while the previous one has been evasive and ambiguous. The current draft demands an unconditional ceasefire, while the previous one has set preconditions for ceasefire. The current draft reflects the general expectations of the international community and enjoys the collective support of the Arab states, while the previous one has been jointly rejected by the Arab states. The differences between the two drafts boil down to nothing but whether there should be an immediate and unconditional ceasefire and whether the collective punishment of the people of Gaza should be allowed to continue. On this issue, China, like most members of the international community, has been very clear from the very outset. Whether we voted against it last Friday or in favor of it today, our vote was based on our consistent position and propositions. After repeated vetoes of the Council actions, the United States finally decided to stop obstructing the Council's demand for an immediate ceasefire. Despite all this, the U.S. still tried to find all kinds of excuses and made accusations against China. The, the eyes of the international community and are open and discerning. The accusations of the U.S. are untenable. On the contrary, it's because of China and other countries concerned uh, because of our upholding of principles and justice, then the U.S. we force the U.S. to realize that it cannot continue to obstruct the efforts of the Council to move in the right direction and take the uh, decisive step. And uh, uh, justice will prevail in the end. Mr. President, nearly six months after the outbreak of the Gaza conflict, over 32,000 innocent civilians, civilians have lost their lives for the lives that have already perished. The Council resolution today comes too late, but for the millions of people in Gaza who remain mired in an unprecedented humanitarian catastrophe, this resolution if fully and effectively implemented, could still bring long-awaited hope. Security Council resolutions are binding. We call on the parties concerned to fulfill their obligations under the United Nations Charter and to take due action as required by the resolution. We expect the state with significant influence to play a positive role on the party concerned, including by using all necessary and effective means at their disposal to support the implementation of the resolution. To this end, all harm to civilians must cease immediately, and the offensive against Gaza must be prevented at once. A ceasefire during the months of Ramadan is only the first step that must serve as the basis leading to a lasting, sustainable ceasefire. And the early return of the people of Gaza 
were forced to flee their homes. At the same time, the blockade of Gaza and the man-made barriers to access of humanitarian supplies must be lifted immediately to ensure that humanitarian supplies enter Gaza in sufficient quantities expeditiously to reach people in need in a safe and uh, timely manner. We appreciate SG Guterres and the humanitarian agencies for their efforts. Israel must fully cooperate to open uh, the cross, uh, Rafa and other land uh, crossings. UNRWA is indispensable and irreplaceable for the people of Gaza to receive international humanitarian assistance. We urge all parties to fully restore funding to UNRWA as soon as possible. We categorically reject Israel's recent vicious campaign of attacks against UNRWA and the United Nations system as a whole. We welcome the efforts of Egypt, Qatar, and the United States to promote the release of the hostages and expect the speedy release of all hostages and detainees and their early return home. Mr. President, the Security Council Based on the adopted resolution today, continue to follow closely the situation in Gaza and get ready for further actions when necessary and ensure the timely and full implementation of its resolutions. China will continue to make unremitting efforts together with all parties to bring an early end to the fighting in Gaza, alleviate the humanitarian catastrophe and implement the two-state solution. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of China for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of Ecuador. Gracias, Presidente. Thank you, Mr. Ecuador President. Ecuador condemns the terrorist attacks in Moscow. We express our solidarity to the families and the victims. Mr. President, and to the refugees and the Russian people, Mr. President. Mr. President, 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 de preparar un texto que pueda ser aceptable para todos los miembros del Consejo y le permita pronunciarse oportunamente frente a una situación humanitaria en constante deterioro. Por esto, el texto es corto y demanda el cese, un cese al fuego por el mes del Ramadán que permita aliviar la situación de la población civil al tiempo que exige la liberación inmediata e incondicional de todos los rehenes y deplora la violencia contra civiles y todos los actos de terrorismo, incluyendo implícitamente los execrables actos cometidos por Hamas en octubre pasado. el texto toma notas de los denodados esfuerzos que viene realizando Egipto, Qatar y Estados Unidos para lograr un acuerdo entre las partes del conflicto que esperamos sea exitoso. El Ecuador ha votado a favor de este proyecto de resolución y se alegra de que haya sido adoptado. Valoramos la flexibilidad de en esta ocasión por todos los miembros ante una situación tan apremiante como la que se vive en Gaza. Debemos ahora todos velar por la implementación completa, efectiva e inmediata de lo que hemos decidido. Muchas gracias. Gracias al Ecuador por su declaración. Le doy la palabra al representante de Guyana. Gracias, señor presidente. Guyana condemns the terrorist attack that occurred in Moscow last week and also extends our condolences to the government and people of Russia. Mr. President, colleagues, Guyana is pleased that this council has finally been able to adopt a resolution which demands an immediate ceasefire, albeit for the month of Ramadan, leading to a lasting and sustainable ceasefire. After more than five months of a war of utter terror and destruction, a ceasefire is the difference between life and death for the hundreds of thousands of Palestinians and others. This demand comes at a significant time as Palestinians are observing the holy month of Ramadan. Sadly, this year's Ramadan is different for Palestinians, fatally different. The observance began as people weep over the killing of their loved ones, while bombs and bullets continue to fall indiscriminately around them. 17,000 children began Ramadan as orphans owing to this war. 
70,000 families began Ramadan without a home, all rubble. Another 290,000 homes severely damaged. Instead of being in their homes, the sacred place where they usually pray, break fast, and commune with family and friends during this holy month, three quarters of the population of Gaza are internally displaced. Ramadan is also a time for families to join for nightly feasts and a time to share food and other blessings with the less fortunate. But for the people in Gaza, there is man-made starvation and we are already seeing evidence of a man-made famine. All of this when there is food available, but deliberately withheld. Women and children are disproportionately impacted. They represent the majority of those killed. Children and pregnant and lactating women are at higher risk of mortality due to lack of adequate nutrition. At the same time, the anguish of the families of the hostages held in Gaza continues to mount with no clear prospect for the return of their loved ones. Palestinians experience the same anguish waiting for their relatives who are illegally detained in Israel to come home. Guyana emphasizes demand, the demand for the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages. We also demand the release of all pa Palestinians held in Israeli jails without trying, trial. Mr. President, colleagues, the realities that the population of Gaza has been facing since 7th of October have worsened with each passing day as the occupying power continues its atrocities. Given these realities and the consensus by elected members of this council that we must act, Guyana unhesitatingly collaborated with fellow elected members to put forward this draft resolution for an immediate ceasefire, the unconditional release of hostages and for expanding humanitarian assistance. In this regard, we thank the coordinator of the E10, His Excellency Ambassador Pedro Camisario, and the delegation of Mozambique for their leadership of this process. We also thank our E10 colleagues and our P5 colleagues for finally, collectively, doing right by the Palestinian people. It is long overdue, but it is still the right thing to have done to stop the indignities against the Palestinian people. But this is just the beginning. The task before us now is to secure full compliance with this resolution and its predecessors, including 2712 and 2720. In this regard, Guyana calls for full adherence to these resolutions. Finally, Mr. President, dear colleagues, the holy month of Ramadan will end in a mere 15 days. It is therefore essential that this council and those with influence on the parties immediately redouble efforts to bring about the lasting and sustainable ceasefire this resolution call for, calls for to secure the release of hostages and to massively scale up humanitarian assistance. This is absolutely necessary to save lives, begin the reconstruction of Gaza, and to create a free state of Palestine with which Israel peacefully coexists. I thank you. I thank the representative of Guyana for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of Sierra Leone. Mr. President, Sierra Leone also expresses deepest condolences to the government and people of the Russian Federation following the Inyo terrorist attacks last week. Terrorism and acts of terrorism in all forms and manifestation are condemnable and unjustifiable. Mr. President, the consideration and adoption of Resolution 2728, co penned by the elected 10 members of the Council, including Sierra Leone, was born out of the need to address the current plight of the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip, especially during this holy month of Ramadan, a time traditionally filled with peace, love, and devotion amongst families and communities. We recognize the Palestinian people's collective struggle, facing each day in hardship, loss, displacement, and hunger. With that in mind, the ETEN initiated the resolution just adopted, built on the purposes and principles of the UN Charter, including the responsibility of the Security Council in the United Nations Collective Security Scheme. With a clear imperative to act as mandated, but also with the establishment of a moral and political imperative, 
The Security Council demands an immediate ceasefire for the month of Ramadan, respected by all parties, leading to a lasting, sustainable ceasefire. The fighting must stop. The killings must stop. The suffering and collective punishment must end. The parties to the conflict are under obligation to respect this demand of the Security Council. The parties are urged to fully implement this resolution 2728, as well as resolutions 2712 and 2720. States with influence are urged to apply the necessary pressure on the parties to implement these resolutions. We continue to support the diplomatic effort of Egypt, Qatar, and United States as complementary to the effort and clear demand of the Security Council. The resolution just adopted also demands the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages, as well as ensuring humanitarian access to address their medical and other humanitarian needs, recalling that the taking of hostages is prohibited under international law. Mr. President, the resolution just adopted further demands the party to the conflict, the parties to the conflict to comply with their obligations under international law in relation to all persons they detain. This is reinforced by the reiteration of the Council's demand for the parties to comply with the obligation under international law, including international humanitarian law and human rights law, to protect all civilians, deploy attacks against civilians and civilian objects, violence and hostilities against civilians, and all acts of terrorism. Recognize that half of the population in the Gaza Strip are facing acute food shortages with the imminent risk of famine. The emphasis on the urgent need to expand the flow of humanitarian assistance to and reinforce the protection of civilians in the entire Gaza Strip is most significant. This demand is further reinforced by the reiteration of the further demand for the lifting of all barriers to the provision of humanitarian assistance at scale. The focus on the humanitarian needs of the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip is aimed at restoring their human dignity. In a similar way, the resolution recognizes the dignity of the hostages and the detainees. Mr. President, Sierra Leone abstained on the vote on the oral amendment proposed by the Russian Federation, even though noting the explanation by the Russian Federation, but compelled to ensure that the objective of demanding an immediate ceasefire is met. The conflict impacts both Israel and Palestinian civilians. Therefore, the demand for an immediate ceasefire for the month of Ramadan must lead to a lasting, sustainable ceasefire. It must lead to a permanent cessation of hostilities, and for Israel and Palestine to live side by side in peace, security, and stability, the ceasefire must lead towards the path of a two-state solution. We will continue in our resolve and support for the two-state solution the only viable pathway to end the occupation and resolve this prolonged conflict. I thank you. I thank the representative of Sierra Leone for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of the United Kingdom. President, I'd like to start by offering the UK's sincere condolences for the terrorist attack at the Crocus City Hall near Moscow. Our deepest sympathy goes to the families of the many victims. President, the United Kingdom has long been calling for an immediate humanitarian pause leading to a sustainable ceasefire without a return to destruction, fighting and loss of life as the fastest way to get hostages out and aid in. That is what this resolution calls for and why the United Kingdom voted yes on this text. President, Israel continues to reckon with the brutal horror of the October 7 attacks and innocent hostages continued to be held by Hamas in Gaza. Israel has a right to defend itself and ensure such an attack can never happen again. We regret that this resolution has not condemned the terrorist attacks perpetrated by Hamas on the 7th of October. The UK condemns these attacks unequivocally. This resolution 
sets out the urgent demand for the unconditional release of all hostages. And we welcome the ongoing diplomatic efforts by Egypt, Qatar, and the United States to this end. The intense suffering of innocent Palestinian civilians in Gaza shows no sign of abating. And a humanitarian catastrophe is unfolding before our eyes. The resolution sends a clear and united message on the need for international humanitarian law to be upheld and for aid to be scaled up urgently, including the lifting of all barriers impeding its delivery. President, the UK Foreign Secretary and Prime Minister have reiterated these messages in our contacts with Prime Minister Netanyahu and other senior Israeli political leaders in recent weeks. We call for this resolution to be implemented immediately. President, we need to focus on how we chart the way from an immediate humanitarian pause to a lasting, sustainable peace without a return to fighting. That means the formation of a new Palestinian government for the West Bank and Gaza, accompanied by an international support package. Removing Hamas capacity to launch attacks against Israel. Hamas no longer being in charge of Gaza. And a political horizon which provides a credible and irreversible pathway towards a two-state solution of Israel and Palestine living side by side in security and peace. I thank you. I thank the representative of the United Kingdom for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, Russia voted in favor of the draft resolution prepared by the 10 non-permanent members of the Security Council. It is of fundamental importance that the UN Security Council for the first time is demanding the parties the observance of an immediate ceasefire, even if it is limited to the month of Ramadan. Unfortunately, what happens after that ends remains unclear since the word lasting could be interpreted in various different ways. And that is very telling. Those who are providing cover for Israel still want to give it a free hand. We very much want to believe that this wording will be used in the interests of peace rather than advancing the inhumane Israeli operation against the Palestinians. The wording permanent would be more precise, and we are disappointed that it did not make it through. But, nevertheless, we believe it is fundamentally important to vote in favour of peace. Nevertheless, the, the Council must continue to work on achieving a permanent ceasefire. We also note what is contained in the resolution, the demand for an uh, immediate and unconditional release of the hostages. On the 22nd of March, there was another very tragic day in the history of the Security Council when, through intrigues and blackmail, um, they tried to put us on the wrong path and to coerce us to adopt a document that, that not only didn't contain a demand or at least a call for a ceasefire, but essentially was presented, uh, as the permanent representative of Algeria said on that day, as a license for the further killing of Palestinians. Neither we nor our Algerian and Chinese colleagues could allow that. 
From the first day of the escalation in the Palestinian-Israeli conflict zone, the Russian delegation has been calling upon members of the Security Council to respond to the unprecedented upsurge in violence with precise and unambiguous demand for an immediate permanent ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. And so doing, fulfilling its mandate for the maintenance of international peace and security. Today, during the vote on our amendment, we once again saw the true face of our colleagues on the Security Council, and we realized who truly wants uh, to end rather than suspend the inhumane Israeli operation. We would like to point out the following. What took place today is a response to those who criticized the veto power of the permanent members of the Security Council. Because if we hadn't used it, if Russia and China hadn't used it on the 22nd of March, instead of a short text that could end the violence in the Gaza Strip, we could have ended up with a very harmful text in the US resolution that not only didn't demand a ceasefire, but also essentially would have given Israel a, a license to continue its actions against the Palestinians, including in Rafah. In conclusion, I would like to remind the representative of the United States, who time and again accuses the Council of not being able to condemn attacks on Israel uh, and Russia of not being able to condemn the 7th of October terrorist attack. On the 18th of October, the U.S. delegation had an opportunity to adopt the Brazilian draft resolution with a clear condemnation of the 7th of October and with a humanitarian pause. And yet, in that wording um, that we presented to Washington, that was insisted upon by Washington. I remind you that at that time, the delegation of Russia, in voting on the resolution, abstained, but the United States vetoed the Brazilian text. Therefore, you should only accuse yourselves. We must not return to this moment endlessly since the six months that have taken place since the 7th of October. The Hamas actions that have repeatedly been condemned by all members of the Security Council in their national capacity Israel responded with an inhumane crimes and the collective punishment of the Palestinian people, as a result of which more than 32,000 entirely innocent citizens have died, the majority of whom are women and children. Just think about those numbers. I would also like to remind you that immediately and unambiguously Russia condemned what took place on the 7th of October, and there's no need to continue speculating on that subject. You know first, we know firsthand what international terrorism is. Unfortunately, we faced a monstrous manifestation of it, its brutal face of terrorism once again. The 22nd of March terrorist attack committed on the territory of our country took at least 143 entirely innocent lives, uh, the very least of 143 entirely innocent civilians who were shot in cold blood, and we have faced such manifestations of terrorism also in the 90s, uh, and we suffered heavy losses as a result. We are grateful to all of those who today express their condolences. Thank you. I thank the representative of Russian Federation for their statement. I shall now make a statement in my capacity as a representative of Japan. The humanitarian situation in Gaza is catastrophic, even during the holy months of Ramadan, with high levels of food insecurity, imminence, imminence of famine, and nearly 1.5 million people sheltering in Rafa, struggling each day for their survival. We deeply mourn the tens of thousands of lives lost in the conflict, starting from October 7th terrorist attack and thereafter on the ground. In this vein, it is absolutely essential for the Security Council to demand an immediate ceasefire for the month of Ramadan respected by all parties, leading to lasting, sustainable ceasefire in Gaza. We all council members also need to demand the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages, as well as ensuring humanitarian access 
to address their medical and other humanitarian needs. This is why Japan, as one of the co pen holders, has tabled the draft resolution. We welcome the Council was able to pass a resolution proposed by the E10 today. In addition, we strongly support the ongoing diplomatic efforts, in particular the 44-party par talks towards a ceasefire in connection with the release of all re remaining hostages. We believe that ceasefire could pave the path towards sustainable peace and stability in the region, which is what the international community voices to us every day. Japan will continue to work at the Council to achieve that path. I thank you. I resume function as the President of the Council. I now give the floor to the Permanent Observer of the, of the Observer State of Palestine. Mr. President, I wish to begin my statement by conveying deepest condolences to the government, people, and my good friend Vasily. Our condolences to of the Russian Federation following the horrific terrorist, terrorist attack in Moscow. We express our sympathy to the bereaved families and stand in solidarity with our Russian brothers and sisters in these difficult days. Mr. President, it has taken six months. Over 100,000 Palestinians killed and maimed, two million displaced, and famine for this council to finally demand an immediate ceasefire. A vote for humanity to prevail, for life to prevail. The Palestinians in Gaza pleaded and appealed, shouted, cried, cursed, prayed, defied the odds to survive time and time again. And yet, continue to face death, destruction and displacement, deprivation and disease, and an, out, an occupation made famine. They are bombed, besieged, buried under the rubble of the houses they had built. They are killed in their homes, in the streets, in hospitals, in ambulances, in new and shelters, and even in tents. Their ordeal must come to an end and must come to an immediate end now. As we speak, families prepare to break their fast, missing loved ones around the table, and they may will find nothing to put on their children's plate. In fact, there is no home sheltering them. There is no table to gather around and there and no plates to fill and no food to eat. They lost their homes. They lost loved ones. Some of them still trapped under the rubble. Imagine being a parent with kids under the rubble and others alive feeling broken, but forced to go on for those who remained. Yesterday, Palestinian Christians cel celebrated Palm Sunday in besieged and destroyed churches that have become shelters in Gaza. They gathered, surrounded by death and praying for resurrection. Palestinian families cannot mourn or heal. They have to find a way to survive and help what is left of their family survive. Mr. President, when such atrocities are being committed in broad daylight against defenseless civilians, including women and children, the right thing to do 
The only thing to do morally, legally, politically, is to put an, to put an end to it. There can be no justification for war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide. Accepting any justification for such crimes is renouncing our humanity and destroying the rule of international law beyond repair. Mr. President, two months ago, the highest international court, the ICJ, determined there was a real and imminent risk of irreparable prejudice to the plausible rights of Palestinians under the Genocide Convention. It ordered Israel to undertake immediate measures in relation to its mass and indiscriminate killing of Palestinians, to depriving Palestinians of the essential goods for their survival, to the incitement to genocide, instead of implementing this mandatory order by the court, Israel has doubled down in the commission of its crimes. Your leaders have said in no uncertain terms that Israel is responsible for the famine underway in Gaza and has used starvation as a method of war. They have called on Israel not to use humanitarian aid as a bargaining chip. They spoke of a man-made disaster, meaning an Israeli occupation-made disaster. They have called repeatedly on Israel to stop its indiscriminate bombing and to spare civilian life to no avail. They have called repeatedly on Israel to give civilians safe haven. Instead, it attacked them even in hospital and UN shelters. It attacked them in the very places it asked them to, he to heed to. It killed them if they stayed and killed them if they left. And now it continues to threaten a ground operation in Rafah, where it has pushed them and confined them at the very edge of the Gaza Strip in yet another attempt to forcibly displace our people. Instead of heeding these calls, Israel has attacked those making them. It continues, in particular, its incitement against the UN. Its Secretary General, whom we salute him from this place. Its agencies, notably UNRWA, the lifeline for Palestinians in Gaza. The Israeli Foreign Minister, wrote that UNRWA co cooperates with terrorists and that the UN has become under the leadership of Antonio Guterres, and I quote, an anti-Semitic and anti-Israeli body that shelters and emboldens terror, defend the Secretary General and the UN. This outrageous incitement has real life consequences for UN and humanitarian staff on the ground who are targets of attacks, who are killed, arrested, and tortured, who are humiliated and harassed. It has also real-life consequences for Palestinians as Israel has used, used it as a pretext to block humanitarian aid to be distributed by UNRWA. It is time for all these Israeli actions to trigger a serious international reaction, one that enforces consequences for these crimes rather than just make pleas that Israel continues to dismiss. There is no humanity when our lives are treated as expendable. There are no rules without enforcement. And Israel has been treated as a state above the law for so long that it feels 
it no longer has to hide when acting as an outlaw state. From ethnic cleansing to genocide. Our agony is caused by Israelis' actions, but also by the impunity it has been afforded. By the fact countries have not taken decisive measures to stop it, and many continue to call it and treat it as an ally even while it is committing such atrocities. Mr. President, we express our appreciation to the E10, all of you, for having put forward this resolution, and we welcome its adoption by the Council. We thank Algeria for representing us and, and all the Arab countries in this endeavor. We salute Arab unity in demanding immediate ceasefire and prevail. This must be a turning point. This must lead to saving lives on the ground. This must signal the end of this assault of atrocities against our people. A nation is being murdered. A nation is being dispossessed. A nation is being displaced for decades now, but never at this scale since the Nakba. Never this openly from Tantura to Gaza from 1948 to 2024, we have endured. We have survived. We have resurrected only to face death once again. Life must prevail in Gaza, must prevail in Gaza. Freedom must prevail in Palestine. For six months now, every single Palestinian in Gaza has endured untold suffering, loss, pain, and tragedy. This must stop now. Palestinian hostages, Palestinian victims are not less deserving of com compassion and empathy of outrage and solidarity. They must be freed from fear and want, from siege and occupation, from death and disposition. Families must be reunited and start to heal, at least from the wounds that can actually be healed. They must be given the chance to bury their loved ones to mourn their loss, to rebuild what can be, even if the ceasefire happened now and the siege was lifted now, it would take generations to deal with the trauma and the devastation. Mr. Mr. President, now that this council has finally called for a ceasefire, all forces should coalesce to make sure it is enforced. Apologies to those who the world has failed, to those that could have been saved and were not. Save the lives of those who survived against all odds. Tell them help is on the way. Hold accountable those who inflicted such suffering upon them. End this injustice, end it now. All of this is long overdue. And I thank you very much, Mr. President. I thank the permanent observer of the observer state of Palestine for his statement. I now give the floor to the representative of Israel. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, at the outset, I want to express my deepest condolences to the Russian people and to the families of all the victims of the heinous terror attack on Friday. Terror must always be condemned in the harshest terms. The Security Council was justifiably quick, very quick, to condemn Friday's terror attack in Russia. Just as it was, wait, it was waited no time to condemn the terror attack in Iran against a police station back in December. Yet still, to this day, the Council refuses to condemn the most widespread and barbaric massacre suffered by the Jewish people since the Holocaust. At least 137 people were murdered at Crocus City Concert Hall in Russia on Friday by radical jihadists. And yes, almost six months ago, nearly 400 people were murdered at the Nova Music Festival in Israel by the radical jihadists of Hamas. Why does the Security Council discriminate, discriminate between Russians murdered at a concert and Israelis murdered at a music festival? Civilians, dear colleagues, no matter where they live, deserve to enjoy music in safety and security. And the Security Council should have the moral clarity to condemn such acts of terror equally, without discrimination. Sadly, today as well, this council refused to condemn the October 7th massacre. This is a disgrace. Colleagues, it was the Hamas massacre that started this war. I repeat, it was the Hamas massacre that started this war. Nearly six months have passed, and the Security Council still has not condemned the child-murdering rapists that began this war. The resolution just voted upon makes it seem as if the war started by itself. Well, let me set the record straight. Israel did not start this war, nor did Israel want this war. Israel disengaged and withdrew from Gaza 18 years ago. We wanted a ceasefire and coexistence. You can repeat here slogans and purport to know for the Palestinians what the Palestinians seek, but this won't make it the truth or the reality. The Palestinian representative here is lying through his teeth when he says that his people want to live side by side with Israel. By the way, as you probably know, he does not represent Hamas, he does not represent the Gazans, they did not choose him to speak for them. His leader, President Abbas, refuses to even condemn the massacre, and he continued to pay terrorists. After Israel withdrew from Gaza, the Palestinians elected Hamas, a terrorist organization. They elected a terror organization. Hamas converted every inch of Gaza into a terror war machine, right under the UN's nose maybe with the help of some of the UN's agencies, like UNRWA. And Hamas initiated ceaseless attacks on Israeli civilians throughout the past 18 years. Thousands and thousands of indiscriminate rockets and missiles at civilians. Today, Hamas is the most popular movement among Palestinians. And according to every poll, the vast majority of Palestinians support Hamas's massacre on October 7th, not only in Gaza, also in Judea and Samaria. This is the reality you should face and you should address. Colleagues, while the resolution fails to condemn Hamas, it does state something that should have, should have been the driving moral force. This resolution denounces the taking of hostages, recalling that it is in violation of international law. Taking innocent civilian hostage is a war crime, and there is no arguing that this is what Hamas has committed. The release of the hostages should have been the number one priority. When it comes to bringing the hostages home, the Security Council must not settle for words alone, but take action, real action. 
It is unfathomable that when it comes to releasing the hostages, we still only see inaction. Not a single step has been taken by the Council, aside from symbolic words. Yet, when it comes to the situation in Gaza, the Council rushed, rushed to take action. You appointed a special coordinator and established a monitoring mechanism. The Council visited Rafa to see the aid shipments firsthand. And the Secretary General has already visited Rafa crossing twice. Why do our hostages not receive concrete action? What have you done to advance their release? Colleagues, following this Council's adoption of UNSCR 2712 and 2720, which both called for the release of the host all hostages, Hamas did not stop to even contemplate for even one moment. It should be very clear that as long as Hamas refuses to release the hostages in the diplomatic channels, there is no other way to secure their return other than through a military operation. So on the one hand, the resolution says that taking civilian hostages is in violation of international law. Yet, on the other hand, despite the fact that you know Hamas won't listen to your calls and release the hostages, you demand a ceasefire. Take a moment and think about this moral contradiction. Your demand for a ceasefire without conditioning it on the release of the hostages not only is not helpful, but it undermines, undermines the efforts to secure their release. It is harmful to these efforts because it gives Hamas's terrorists, it gives Hamas terrorists the hope to get a ceasefire without releasing the hostages. All members of the Council, all members, should have voted against this shameful resolution. Mr. President, where are these Council's actions? Why don't you designate Hamas as a terror organization? Even if there, if there are Council members here who would prevent this due to their political alliances with Hamas leadership, where are the moral efforts to advance such a designation? I wish to suggest an alternative text that should have been adopted by the Council if it, if it wasn't so biased against Israel. The Security Council strongly condemns and deplores all abuses of human rights and where applicable violations of international humanitarian law by the terrorist group, including those involving violence against civilian populations, notably women and children, kidnapping, killing, hostage-taking, pillaging, rape, sexual slavery, and other sexual violence, recruitment of children, and, and destruction of civilian property. The Security Council demands that the terrorist group immediately and unequivocally seize all hostilities and all abuses of human rights and violations of international humanitarian law and disarm and demobilize. The Security Council demands the immediate and unconditional release of all those abducted who remain in captivity. The Security Council recognizes that some of such acts may amount to crimes against humanity. Well, colleagues, I did not draft this text. You know who did? this Council. This is the resolution adopted by the Council 10 years ago when Boko Haram kidnapped the schoolgirls in Nigeria. So I ask you again, why can this Council call on Boko Haram to lay down their arms, but the same cannot be demanded of the murderous Hamas terrorists? Is the life of little baby Kfir Bibas worth less than the life of Nigerian child? Sadly, it's for the same reason why you can condemn terror attacks in Russia and Iran, but not in Israel. To this council, Israeli blood is cheap. This is a travesty, and I'm disgusted. Thank you, Mr. President.
I thank the representative of Israel for their statement. I now give the floor to the representative of Yemen. Thank you, Mr. President. It is my honor to deliver the statement on behalf of the Arab group. At the outset, I would like to congratulate you and congratulate Japan on presiding over the Council for this month. I also thank you for holding this session. We would also like to express our condolences to our colleague Vasili and to the Russian delegation as well as the Russian government and people for the terrorist act that claimed the lives of dozens of victims. We condemn this terrorist act and we condemn terrorism in all its forms. The Arab group would like to thank the E10 for tabling this concise and humanitarian draft resolution that, in it, that was adopted by the Security Council. This resolution unequivocally and expressly calls for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza during the holy month of Ramadan, leading to a permanent and sustainable ceasefire. Given the urgency of this call from the Arab Group and the international community as a whole, especially in light of the dangerous and catastrophic deterioration of the humanitarian situation in Gaza, which can no longer be accepted or tolerated. The Arab group would like to express its thanks and appreciation to all the members of the Security Council that engaged in a positive manner in the negotiations on this draft resolution, and we value the position of member states that voted in favor of this urgent humanitarian resolution. We also welcome the adoption of Resolution 2728, which gives priority to the humanitarian dimension in order to save the lives of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians to make sure that the Security Council once again is shouldering its legal and moral responsibilities in maintaining international peace and security and to end the bloodbath in Gaza. The Arab group also reaffirms that we should consider this resolution as a first step leading to another binding resolution that stipulates the immediate ceasefire in the Gaza Strip in order to compel Israel to immediately and without any preconditions cease the war it has launched against the Gaza Strip. We also reaffirm that the efforts to reach an agreement on the exchange of prisoners and detainees and the ratification of a truce. This does not run counter to the call for an immediate ceasefire, as this call would contribute to facilitating and enhancing these efforts. Mr. President, this council has been the hostage of political calculations and narrow interests that disregard the humanitarian and legal right to save lives, stem the bloodshed, and deliver urgent assistance to those in need without any obstacles. This lies at the heart of the responsibilities and functions of this council adopting today's resolution comes as a response, albeit late, to the Palestinian victims and the calls of the international community for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. We do hope that you will continue to work seriously and not just focus on a temporary ceasefire, but to work on reaching a comprehensive and final ceasefire to allow the delivery of all humanitarian assistance to Gaza without obstacles, to put an end to the crime of forceful displacement of Palestinians that seeks to uproot them from their lands. 
ويؤكد أن سلطات الاحتلال الإسرائيلي لا تملك شيء على بيان الاستمرار في ارتكاب المجازر اليومية بحق الأطفال والنساء ومنع المساعدات الإنسانية Furthermore, the Arab group renews its position that rejects the policy of bias, cover-up, and protection for the plans of the Israeli occupation authorities at the expense of over 32,000 people who died and over 72,000 people who were injured, mostly women and children, in the Gaza Strip over the past five months of this brutal Israeli aggression, the Arab group categorically rejects the double standards that is prolonging this conflict in light of the complete failure to implement any resolutions on Palestine over the past 75 years. We also call once again for the complete implementation of all relevant Security Council resolutions, including resolutions 2712 and 2723 of 2023. Mr. President, the Israeli occupation forces continue with their crimes and their aggression and genocidal war against civilians in the Gaza Strip since the 7th of October. They are targeting women and children. They have even added fuel to the fire by adopting the policy of starvation against the Palestinian people to add to Israel's crimes against humanity and its blatant violations. Therefore, the Arab group calls on this council to hold Israel accountable for its crimes and to impose strict sanctions on settlers in the occupied Palestinian territory, including in Jerusalem, those who are perpetrating acts of violence against the Palestinian people or those who are inciting violence. The Israeli occupation should also bear the consequences of this brutal aggression and the brutal massacres against the residents of Gaza. They should bear the responsibility of rebuilding what their monstrous military machine has destroyed. They should pay reparations to all victims that died as a result of this aggression. In conclusion, Mr. President, the Arab group reaffirms that it will continue with, the, with its efforts at all levels and in all fora to make sure that this council shoulders its responsibility to make sure that the provisions of this resolution are implemented provisions on an immediate ceasefire on the delivery of humanitarian assistance without obstacles to put an end to the policy of forcible displacement of the Palestinian people and to provide international protection to Palestinians in the occupied Palestinian territory and to hold Israel, the occupying power, accountable for all its crimes against the Palestinian people. The Arab group also calls on all countries and international organizations to recognize without delay an independent Palestinian state along the lines of June 4, 1967, with East Jerusalem as its capital, and to accept Palestine as a full member state of the United Nations and its entities in order to end the suffering of this people and to restore some of it, their inalienable rights that they have been denied over the past decades so that Palestinians can live live in their independent states that is recognized internationally, that is a full member of the United Nations, similar to other countries around the world. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Yemen for their statement. There are no more names inscribed on the list of the speakers. The meeting is adjourned.
Finally. Finally. Yes, yes. Where is the president? Jose ran away. Amar, I think ah, is Amar. I wanted to mention all the. We are good. Yes, you. You are good. Yes, I want to go Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, um, I would like to make a statement on behalf of the elected members of the Security Council, who are uh, Algeria, Ecuador, Guyana, Japan. Malta, Republic of Korea, Sierra Leone, Slovenia, Switzerland, and my own country, Mozambique. It is a historical day for the Council. For the first time ever, we sponsored and uh, the Council adopted uh, the uh, resolution on the question of Palestine. We are happy that the Council has successfully adopted the much needed resolution to demand the immediate ceasefire in Gaza and the release of hostages. It also demands that the parties comply with their obligations under international law in relation to all persons that they detain. It is our hope, it is the hope of the E10 that the resolution adopted today will be implemented in good faith by all parties and will help ease the suffering of the population in Gaza. Humanitarian aid must flow immediately and without delay. We also hope that this resolution will pave the way for more positive perspectives towards a lasting peace in the Middle East. Finally, we would like to hail the determination, unity, cohesion, and commitment of all members of the E10 group in tabling the text and conducting an inclusive and transparent discussions throughout the process that with the cooperation of the permanent members has led us today to achieve this important goal. I thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Ambassador, in her remarks, thank you very much, Ambassador. Nadi Sitima from Al Jazeera English. In her remarks to the Security Council following the adoption of the ceasefire, Ambassador of the United States, Linda Thomas Greenfield, mentioned that this is a non binding resolution. What is your reaction to those comments? I will invite other colleagues to respond. <laughs> <laughs> I can respond to that. Yeah. We have a 
O Anda da Chata. All Security Council resolutions are binding and every member states are under the obligation to implement those resolutions. But uh, I still uh, invite uh, the... Uh, maybe legally speaking, it's non-binding because uh, in accordance with the UN Charter, all security council decisions must be implemented and legally binding, but uh, this resolution did not use the word decide. And uh, it did not invoke Chapter 7 of the Charter. So legally speaking, it may not be legally binding, but morally, I mean, as I said in my statement, this reflects the consensus of the international community. So it should be implemented. All, all United Nations Security Council resolutions are binding and mandatory. I have been a member of the International Law Commission for 15 years and president, and I know what I'm saying. Thank you, Okay? If I, yes, if I could add, firstly, just to say that it's an important day for Eton Unity. And so the question about the binding nature of the resolution is a legal one. And following the um, view of um, the Parliament representative of um, Mozambique, who was a member and chair of the ILC, being a legal practitioner myself and being part of the Sixth Committee for over five years, I will say it is binding. And it's not just my words, it's also the words of the International Court of Justice in the advisory opinion 1971, um, uh, advisory opinion given by the ICJ. So I think it should be clear to everyone that this resolution is binding on the parties. Thank you. Can I follow up on comments about Chapter 7 and how if it's not a Chapter 7 resolution, it's not legally binding, as the Ambassador from Republic of Korea has mentioned? I think you had the answer already. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. But uh, I invite you to have some international law with me. خليه يجي الجزائري الله يعزمه اللي بده يجي معنا اهلا وسهلا عمار تعال هون 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 عمار هون جنبي 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 وين الرئيس الرئيس Thank you very much for being with us. It is a historic day today where for the first time after almost six months the Security Council adopted a resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire. And we in the Arab group from the first day of this aggression were united around three objectives. The first objective was an immediate ceasefire to stop the aggression against our people. Today is a significant step in that direction. The second objective was to have humanitarian assistance up to the need of our people in the Gaza Strip. I believe the ceasefire will open the door for the implementation of that second objective. And the third objective was not to allow the crime against humanity from forcefully transferring our people outside the Gaza Strip, although they have been internally forced to move from the north to the center, to the south, and then to other places in the Gaza Strip. A ceasefire, immediate ceasefire, would allow 
our people to return to the places where they were displaced from. So I am proud of the unity of the Arab group. I am proud that our representative in the Security Council is Algeria, working closely with us, reflecting the demands of the Arab group, and I think today we prevailed. Those who say that the Security Council is not enforceable or not mandatory, give us a break. We go to the General Assembly, they say it is not enforced or binding. We come to the Security Council, they tell us it's not binding. We do not buy that. Security Council resolutions are binding. And if Israel is not going to implement it, then it is the duty of the Security Council to use Chapter 7 to take measures and punitive measures in order to make them obey the resolution of the Security Council. We are not done. We salute our people in Gaza and in all of Palestine. All of our people, all of their leaders, we are one as Palestinians. We survived this ordeal. We will rebuild Gaza. We are very proud and resilient people. And thank you for covering our story during these five and a half months, and we are not done. We will go back to the Security Council tomorrow. We will ask them to defend the brave Secretary General who, have, who is with us today in refugee camps of the Palestinians in Jordan. He is the one who went to Rafah twice. He is the one who met with the leaders of Egypt, of Jordan, of Palestine, of all the Arabs, calling for a humanitarian ceasefire from early after the aggression. And he today called from Jordan, implement the Security Council resolution that was adopted just a few minutes ago. We salute him. We will defend him. We will defend the agencies of the United Nations. And we will ask the Security Council tomorrow to issue a statement or a position defending the Secretary General and the UN agencies. And we will not be done. We will continue the march, and we will start working on a draft resolution to make sure that, Ga that Rafah will not be invaded. Rafah should be protected. We should not create a horrific humanitarian situation or crimes in Rafah to push our people outside Rafah in the direction of Egypt. So we are not done. We will continue working. The unity of the Arab group is playing a tremendous role in the unity in the Security Council, especially among the 10. And we will continue working, and we will keep you informed. Talal, you are first, number one. Thank you so much. Um, what's your comment and what the American Ambassador Linda Thomas Greenfield said, that any release, any ceasefire must be accompanied by the release of all, unconditional release of all hostages, knowing very well by many, and they argue, that if all hostages were released, there's nothing to stop Israel from going the whole way. Well, Israel has to abide by its obligation and the charter, and it has to immediately stop the fighting. This is what the resolution called, immediate ceasefire. Any member can interpret as they wish, but the law is the law. The language of the resolution is crystal clear, an immediate ceasefire. Therefore, an immediate ceasefire has to be put in place. But, but the resolution also uh, calls for unconditional immediate release of hostages. Now, there are many people in the Middle East say, what guarantees are once the hostages, all hostage, hostages are released? What guarantees do we have that Israel will not go the whole way to Rafah to, more disruptions, more, what stops Israel from doing that? I understand the frustration of our people and they have the right to be frustrated from the international community that dragged its feet for five and a half months before they agreed to a ceasefire. But the language of the resolution is crystal clear. Operative paragraph one starts from demanding an immediate ceasefire. The second part of the sentence it is, it is not 
conditional upon the first part. It says, and also it calls for the other part. The other part was reflected in all the resolutions in the Security Council, adopted in the Security Council, and the resolutions adopted in the 10th emergency session twice in the General Assembly. All of us are saying immediate ceasefire, and in fact, our brothers and sisters, Egypt, Qatar, are negotiating with the United States and others, and negotiating and mediating with our brothers, uh, Hamas. The release of the hostages and exchange of prisoners. So that principle is not being rejected by all of us, provided that there is a release of the Palestinian detainees, especially those who are serving uh, life sentence. And I think that that will happen, and we hope that it happens very soon. And we are behind Egypt and, uh, and Qatar, who are playing a very uh, important role in the mediation and the negotiation in order to have a deal. So that is not something that is rejected by the Arabs or by you know, those who are negotiating this uh, agreement on that deal. You asked a lot of questions before, <laughs> but if there's a woman before you that wants to ask a question, would have the, right? I don't see anyone. Okay, you, thank you, Ambassador. You're the last one. Thank you. Anadi Satuma from Al Jazeera English. During the meeting, Prime Minister Netanyahu indicated that he was going to cancel a visit to D.C. in reaction to the Security Council adoption. What is your comment on the fact that it seems that negotiations on the ground for a deal are going in the opposite direction, to not towards a deal, in reaction to this resolution? I don't know, really know what the negotiation on the ground entails. I'm not involved in it. My job is to work at the UN, including the Security Council, to produce resolutions like the one that we produced. That is my job. Now, with regard to the relationship between uh, Netanyahu and uh, the current administration in Washington, D.C., we leave it up to them to respond to his, uh, you know, uh, disrespectful way of behaving with the country that is responsible for the survival of, of Israel and arming Israel and giving it, you know, ammunition and giving it a billion of billions of dollars to continue the atrocities against our people. They have to stand up and, re and respond to him. That is not my job to respond to that. It is their job. Thank you very much for being with us. I understand, I understand that uh, you go to the General Assembly and it's not binding that you come here and it's not binding, but we just witnessed how two different ambassadors interpreted this resolution in two different ways. I think that interpretation is in the, among lawyers and uh, legal experts over you know, this issue. There are differences of opinions, but the law is the law. The Charter demands from all member states to honor and respect and implement Security Council resolutions. And my brother Mahmoud is the legalist among us. But let me also add, just in case that a country rebel against Security Council resolution, it makes then sense that the Security Council that has tools available to them to resort to Chapter 7 to take measures in order to force that rebel country to comply with Security Council resolution. But my no, brother uh, Mahmoud uh, can respond. Uh, th thank you. I mean, the ambassador has summed it uh, perfectly. Article 25 of the Charter says it clearly that the, uh, uh, the members of the, of the United Nations shall carry out the decisions of the Security Council. The language used in OP1 is demand language. It's a binding language which is based on Article 25 of the Charter. As such, it, ha it is a mandatory resolution that has to be carried out. If you're talking about Chapter 7, Chapter 7, when you use Chapter 7, it is for enforceable measure. If a country violates international law in a manner that threats international peace and security, you can use force or impose sanctions. This is what Chapter 7 is about. So that's, that's, uh, that's the difference. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you Thank all. You Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello.
Good afternoon. I wanted to say that uh, So the UK, including my Prime Minister and Foreign Secretary, have long called for an immediate humanitarian pause as the fastest way to get the hostages out and to get more aid into Gaza, leading to a sustainable ceasefire and progress towards long-term peace. That is what this resolution calls for and it's why we voted in favour of it today and we call on the, for the implementation of the resolution to be immediate. We regret that the resolution did not condemn the terrorist attacks perpetrated by Hamas on the 7th of October. We condemn these attacks unequivocally and the Council should do so too. Palestinians in Gaza are living through a humanitarian catastrophe. The situation will not improve until more aid can get in. And my Prime Minister and my Foreign Secretary have been clear in their engagements with Israel that all barriers to aid delivery need to be lifted. We have not yet seen the improvements that we need to get more aid in. The Council's message today is an important one, and I reiterate we call for it to be implemented immediately. Thank you. There's been some discussion about whether this resolution is binding or non-binding. What does Britain think? And given that you've abstained on previous resolutions, you've now voted in favour, does this signal any kind of British frustration with Israel? So, in our view, this resolution needs to be implemented immediately. I said that in my explanation of vote. It sends a clear council message, a united council message, and we expect all council uh, resolutions to be implemented. Uh, this one is not any different, and the demands in the resolution are absolutely clear. Uh, the humanitarian pause leading to a sustainable ceasefire, the release of the hostages, uh, international humanitarian law and humanitarian aid in. Um, and on the second uh, part of your question, uh, this uh, resolution is completely consistent with my Prime Minister and Foreign Secretary's position. You know, as I said, they've been calling for a long time for a humanitarian pause as a way to get hostages out and aid in, uh, leading to a sustainable ceasefire and then a long-term solution. And we see this resolution as a very important step uh, on that way. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Israel has indicated that they will no longer be letting aid convoys to the north of Gaza. Do you have any reaction to that? So, as I said, uh, one important part of this resolution is that we call for humanitarian aid for all of the barriers uh, that are impeding humanitarian aid access to be lifted. And again, my Foreign Secretary and my Prime Minister have been unequivocal and robust with the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu and senior Israelis that those barriers need to be lifted. Thank you.